Order the new Lo-Fi Penguin Desk Pad and Picky Penguin Notebook available over on Creator Inc. Check the link in the description below. Previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Defendant and your legal representative, it's me, British Kameda, here again, everyone's favorite character. The trial's about to begin, get your sexy little Japanese booty in here. Oh God, Bailiff gives me weird vibes. I heard that. Ah! And now back to legging it, people. Snigopi, back with some more The Greatest Attorney to Resolve. We last left off. This case is getting nutty. <laughs> this case is getting so nutty. I'm really struggling to understand what the hell is going on. I am so confused. What the holy doodly pants is happening? So we're suggesting seemingly that Miss Green is actually the one to have attempted to poison Shamspear. And my, my main question is, Actually, I have, I have so many questions. I even made one. How? <laughs> how did she know this? How did she get this information? Did she get it from the person from the note? I thought that she was on the way to see that person that who had sent her that note. Did she? And maybe she just lied to us and she was coming back after seeing that. But that would then sort of suggest, like to me at least, right, that it has been a fucking while since she has learned this information because she'd have to go and get poison and come back to his room while he's gone and put the poison on the thing right like it doesn't seem like a spur of the moment i like that's what she said to us right that so she went there the night that she got stabbed in the back to go meet with the person that sent her that note right unless at some point after that she like came back did she like get up during her coma did she not have like, this is what I mean. Like, my timeline events is like, just makes us feel like, how is this fucking possible? I'm so confused. Did she, like, did she pretend to have a coma and get up and, like, she learned the information at some point and when and how and the poison, the, the poison seemingly would be something that she got from the, the doctor's office, maybe, right? Was that the same poison that she had? Uh, and she almost drank, which by the way, why would a doctor have poison? <laughs> why would the doctor have literally a giant bottle of poison? Unless it's just like ODing, but why would he have a bottle of strike nine if that's really what it is? I don't know. <laughs> I have so many questions, but like, I mean, I get the motivation clearly. She knew Shame Spear was the one that killed her boyfriend. So she set this up. So, I mean, and she'd have to know the circumstances too. That's why she knew to put poison on the pipe when he blew into it. Damn though, is that not oddly specific, right? Like this took, that took us up some time to figure out ourselves. So I, I feel like, I feel like the only way this is feasible is that she got that information from the person that sent her the note. Um, and I guess I, I just need to get that timeline explained to me for them to square away when she got stabbed in this whole grand scheme of things. Did she already have the poison set in there? Was that something much more recent? Did she just do it? Did she literally just, was it? Maybe that was it. Maybe she just woke up from her uh, from her coma. She would already found out the information. She left or snuck out of the hospital, put the poison on the... Because, right, because seemingly has the Shamspear been tr probably trying to kill Suseki for a while now? And we still have, of course, the questions as to why that, right? Why did he kill... Seem seemingly kill uh, Miss Green's fiance? So many questions. I'm just like, this just, just got me all fucking frazzle I, I don't know what's going on dude it's a wild case though it's really good I, I am looking forward to it and I think the other question we'll have to ask then too right is who is the one that sent the note who has this inside information in, into how this happened right who the fuck would know that <laughs> that's not already dead clearly it wouldn't be Siseki uh fiance's dead so who's left the prisoner guy no I mean well well, he, no, he already went to jail and when Shamsphere, I don't know, man, I just, I, I'm going to drive myself crazy. I should probably just, I should probably just wait, all right? Just wait for things to get explained before I just drive myself off the deep end with fucking conspiracy theories. Uh, but anyway, last episode, uh, Umpteenth Reason said, as Nico gets older, his ability to predict the plot gets better. However, his memory of plot points that already happened starts to disappear. Eventually, he'll be able to accurately predict natural catastrophes in the real world, but we'll forget what he ate five minutes after doing so. Perfectly balanced. <laughs> yes, perfectly balanced as all things should be. 
This is God's way of nerfing my godlike ability to predict the fucking future of video games. It's not a very useful ability in general, but for my profession, it's it's very useful. Yes. <laughs> yes, that, that would be uh it's just like what like one of those uh Greek tragedies or some shit, right? Like that one lady who could see the future but nobody believed her. Like the same thing. It's like you will predict the future, but only through random, hilarious ad libs that you make up on the spot. And you won't even realize what you're saying is actually a look into the future until it has come to pass. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, curse you, Zeus, or whoever God is doing this. Ah, <laughs> that's all I need to say, too. That, so basically, juror number six, the old man, is basically going to be me in the future. Probably, pr probably. I'll be like, eh, hey, what did you guys, what did you say, penguins? I couldn't, I couldn't hear you when you wrote down your comment. <laughs> what's that? Uh, what's, what's this plot again? Uh, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the previous episode where I also got confused about what the plot was. Uh, but um, T, thank you so much for your probably a uh, truthful look into the future. And it's for that reason you are comment of the day. All right. I've been dying to get back to this because I just want, I want to know what's going on. All right. I would love to know if I'm like like the only guy here it's like I, I i feel like there's a very distinct possibility that i'm over complicating things here which wouldn't surprise me i have had a tendency to do that but and i, I feel like some of it might be I've, I've misunderstood some information given to me i i did go back though and actually look at what Gr miss green said to us like um and she did say that I, she was on her way to go meet the person that she received the note from so that you know that was said by her I think that just might not be true. Oh, right. And the envelope. Part of the envelope is actually in Shamspear's room. <laughs> so, ha! Okay, let's just, let's just go, all right? Before I lose my mind anymore. What's going on? Tell me! Fucking Naruto, his brain's exploding too. He's like, ah! Uh, February 23rd, 1130 AM, the old Bailey defended the Santee Chamber. Joy, joy, uh, uh, joyful jubilant ja jumping jacks! Oh, Mr. Osume, I'm so pleased for you. Look up, sir, Mr. Ahoda Esquire, and non locum, uh, non locum judicial assistant, Miss Mikitobe Esquire. Now, finally, at long last, there can be proof. Proof that I'm innocent and. Proof that my tea is innocent! Oh, the other thing. The thing, too, that's actually making this case also super intriguing is the fact that it's like it seems like the victim of the previous case is going to be the culprit of this case but at the same time Shakespeare is clearly not an innocent individual either right like it, it's kind of going to be unfortunate because he probably did fucking deserve that demon die from that poison uh based on his previous track record so she's probably going to get arrested for this for this attempt in uh, revenge but at the same time I'm pretty sure Shakespeare is not going to be getting off scot-free either Ah, good morning, my dear fellows. I'm here just in time for my music. <laughs> Iris over there jamming out. Yeah! <laughs> Sherlock Holmes! You and your freaking butt bumping beats! May you drink my tip and tea and fall forever silent! Thought the tea was innocent. <laughs> I will kill you! Innocent anymore! Oh, Mr. Holmes, you came. How wonderful! It's all right, yeah, just in time, you only missed half the trial. Please, save your, save your derision. I know what you're all thinking. Good morning, he says. What is very nearly time for luncheon? Your score is written clearly across your faces. Nobody said or thought anything of the sort. Oh, shit, get out of my head, Holmes. The truth is, I was determined that today would be the day. As sleep seduced me last night, I thought. Tomorrow, for once, I shall not oversleep. I'll rise early and be present in court to support my companions. Such spirit and determination is a beauty of all of its own, does it not? Oh, yes. And then I began to muse on the subject. Why do people oversleep, I queried. Why, time after time, do they make the same foolish blunder? And the answer came to me at once. It's so delightfully simple. People oversleep because they sleep. Well, is that not an astute as as insight into the matter? Oh, yes. Upon which realization, I attempted an experiment. I didn't sleep a wink all night. <laughs> Just been fucking drinking cups of espresso, baby. Woo! And the results? By first light, I was exhausted and began to be assailed by fits of drowsiness. Shocking. And so the conclusion of tonight, last night's experiment is this. A good night's sleep is quite simply essential. Yes, I think most of us probably knew that already. 
What others presuppose, I prove by experimentation. That, my dear fellow, is a scientific method. Anyway, how's the whole, uh, how's the whole, uh, black life thing going? <laughs> ah, yes, one more thing. Do you remember this? Yes. Ah. I had a sip of it. It's not, it's not very good, actually. A <laughs> little, little bit salty. Yes, of course. It's the poison that Miss Green was about to drink at the hospital yesterday. Oh, you did manage to. It was a laborious task, as the boulder was near, em near empty. But such inconveniences do not hinder Holmes. I managed to confirm that it contains Strike 9. Oh, there we go. So I was right. Yeah. Perhaps, though, of course, such circumstantial evidence doesn't prove Miss Green's guilt. I shall leave the bottle in your care now. But licking the inside of the neck is not recommended. I should know. I know from first hand. <laughs> A bottle found in the possession of Miss Green with traces of slow-acting poison strike nine inside. Uh. Ah, can I have a word? Is this Miss Green? Oh, no. I have a word. Gregson, how good of you to come. I've been here the whole time. I get it. Excuse me. But wait a minute, Inspector. <sighs> Let me just grab my fish and chips. I don't need these. Ah, don't wish to make a nuisance of myself. Look on your face. I'd say someone else who you think is making a nuisance of himself. My dear Inspector, please speak freely. Pretend that I'm not here. Believe me, if I could do that, life would be a whole lot simpler for me. <laughs> do you have the results, Inspector, of the investigation in Mr. Shamsner's room? Not yet. Shouldn't be long now, though. No, I'm here about something else. That dead convict, actually. Oh, you mean the man from this newspaper article we discovered yesterday in Mr. Shamsner's room? A man by the name of, ah, uh, yes, Selden. I went through the archives of the yard and dug out the fellow's file. There's something in there that, well, it caught my eye. Something caught your eye? What, Inspector? What? Show us! I've covered out the relevant parts for you, so you can read it for yourselves. Thank you. Uh, okay. The Scotland Yard's file about the convicted criminal, Selden, that includes the newspaper article about him dying of illness in prison. These documents. Let's have a little look-see doodle. Um... Investigative findings relate to Selden. 18 counts of burglary, 6 counts of suspected murder. Died of natural causes whilst in prison, his final moments witnessed only by his cellmate. The estimated 1,000 pounds worth of loot he stole remains unrecovered. Oh, fucking, I knew it. Okay. And that's what Shamspear has likely been looking for, right? Was his cellmate Shamspear? Con condemned criminal, criminal dies of natural causes in prison. Manchester's strange ways prison announced the death of the convicted murderer and burglar Selden by natural causes in the early hours this morning. He had been suffering with fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could car be carried out. Ah, uh, really? Alerted by the, the shouts of his cellmate who absolutely had nothing to do with his death and is totally not Shamspear. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's have a little look-see of this. So there's anything to look at. So this is the poison we've been hearing so much about. Strike nine. Wonder what it tastes like. Mr. Norohoto, no! Sorry, it just looks so tasty. No! This is why I'm always so afraid for you! It's all going on right now in, inside of Susito's head. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Susito, are you okay? Get that out of your <laughs> Smacks it out of his hand. There are a few remnants on the bottom of the bottle here. Look. You mustn't be tempted to try it. Of course not. As long as we don't lose this trial. <laughs> no! Even if we lose the trial. <laughs> No, we must lose the troll in the first place, Mr. Arohoto. Make, up, make your mind up, Susto-san. Seems to be it. Include the details that were in the newspaper cutting we found in Mr. Shamsu's room. I'll rearrange everything in the court record so we don't have duplicate information. Oh. Aha! Did that shrink things? It did! Yeah, I was like, that technically is the same. That, they did have information in there was the same as the newspaper article. Why are you giving us a copy of this important file, though? Well, you're the ones to turn up the clue in the first place, aren't you? I'm just making sure things get handled in the proper fashion. Oh, Skull and Yard's workings are so wonderful. Indeed, my dear fellows. And the inspector here is a shining diamond in his crown. A shining diamond in the rough, maybe. Diamond in the rough. Look, I just want to be beholden to a lawyer, that's all. Don't you look at me like that. I'm not your friend. Get away from me. Counsel for the defense and the defendant. Hello! 
Call proceedings and I'm about to resume. Make your way to the call room at once. Bring your tea and crumpets with you. What, you don't have any tea and crumpets? Not like me, British Commission. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. We'll actually leave you then. I'll be listening with interest from the public gallery. Not nodding off at all. Certainly not. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. I'm rather tired of seeing Mr. Mustache in flood, floods of tears, personally. So, the best of luck to you. Look up, sir, Mr. Oh, Esquire. Yes, Mr. Natsume. It, it's time, isn't it? Yes, this is it. Miss Olive Green and Mr. William Shamspear. This is gonna be the final battle. The final battle! I won't really have say Saseki san until I've exposed the whole truth of everything that's been going on. But it's all coming to a head now. You can do it, Ryanosuke. You have to. Smack them cheeks. Ah! February 23rd, 12.30 p.m. in the Old Bailey Court Room. All right, we're back. I just realized, why, why don't I get a little sidekick of my own? Why is the prosecutor always appeal all by his lonesome, but all the defense attorneys get their own little assistant or Maya, whatever? I want a Maya. Would my leg count some Maya? In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this call to be in session again now. I just got done taking my lordly dues. Before the recess, we had a most startling accusation from the defense. Namely, the victim of the case we heard here only a few days ago is the true perpetrator of this incident. A reckless, rash, and prejudiced charge of wrongdoing in my opinion, my lord. However... The prosecution has tried to extend every courtesy to this amateur newcomer from dubious eastern shores. Th thank you! For that backhanded consideration. A rather cold assessment from the honorable British prosecutor, I must say. So, Lord Van Ziegs, is the new witness present and ready to take the stand? Ready and waiting in the witness's antechamber, my lord. Very well. Bailiff! Yes, Saji? Bring the witnesses in. Oakley Doakley. You come on here, you little rotund lady. Ah, oh, I'm still here too. Ah, and I'm so jolly and gay. <laughs> witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court, please. William Shamspear, my liege. You should know by now I've been up here like 30 times. For my occupation, I could only say only that I'd be a tragic victim to be pitied. <laughs> Currently unemployed, in other words. <laughs> I'm Olive Green. I'm a fledgling artist. Oh, well, no. <laughs> Here she brought her whole little her little, little canvas up there and look at her go. And they just they just let him do it. It's like you bring whatever the hell you want up there. You want to bring a gun and a knife or some deadly weapon? Sure, what the, we don't give a shit. We don't give a crap here in any of the courtrooms of any of these Ace Attorney games. Not a fledgling, really. A hopeless failure who's too weak spirited to admit she has no talent, I suppose. Also currently unemployed, in other words. <laughs> what a coterie. Mr. Shamspear. My lord, I am thy humble servant. I'm afraid that you are no longer merely the victim in this affair. The possibility has been raised that you are in fact the assailant intent on taking the life of your fellow lodger. The part you have played in this whole business will be thoroughly scrutinized, I assure you. I would for naught else, my lord. And Miss Green? Yes? You are aware of the reason you have been summoned to this courtroom today, I presume? Not really. Yes, the officer did explain. While tossing crumpets at me. Ah! Uh, he said I poisoned this ridiculous buffoon. Oh, here we go. Here's my gimmick. <laughs> She's gonna be. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. She took the paint out of there and made an arrow on her little, uh, little plaque. And do you accept the charge, Miss Green? I don't know anything about any poisoning. And. I don't know anything about this man. Come, lady. Die to live. Verily, I know not thy prickly pea pigmented personage. Very well, let us proceed with the matter at hand. That being to ascertain whether or not Miss Green has any involvement in this affair. It's all very strange. Very strange indeed. Why would you suspect me? I barely ever go to the East End anyway. It so happens that I passed by the neighborhood six days ago, that's all. And on the night that this man was poisoned, I was still in the hospital fighting for my life. 
guest having been un unfortunately caught up in the incident on the street outside the Gerdeb household. Stabbed in the fucking spine. Ow! Oh. An incident that rendered you unconscious for some three days. I was struck in the middle of my back by a knife. For no fault of my own. And now I'm under suspicion. What other irrelevant things might I be suspected of? It's all very disturbing. Mm, your energies may be better spent worrying about random knife attacks, I feel, Miss Green. At this point in time, all that appears to connect you with Mr. Shamsbeer's lodgings is the Briar Road incident of six days ago. That's why. We would like you to testify formally now about exactly what happened. Oh, no. The incident six days ago? You, you mean you want me to relive that awful incident? Unfortunately, yes. Please tell the court what happened that day. And of course, we will be interested to hear from you about your movements that day too, Mr. Shamspear. Uh, but, but what happened six days ago has nothing to do with me being poisoned. Let us proceed then. The witnesses will present their formal testimony to the court. On the subject of the incident that took place on Prior Road the evening of the 17th of February. This is going to be interesting. All right, the evening of the 17th of February. It was six days ago. At about 5 p.m., I was walking along in the snow when I was suddenly stabbed in the back. Coincidentally, it happened to be just outside the house where the men in this case have had their lodgings. Ma'am, you're just gonna get paid all over your face. What are you doing? What are you doing? I was at the tavern on the eve of which thou speakest, for I had bespoke my supper. It was the first time I'd been in the area. I had a little matter to attend to, that's all. Anyway, I was admitted straight to the hospital, so I knew nothing about all this business. Wait, what did he say? He was at the tavern? Where was she supposed to meet him again? Was it at a tavern? I thought it was like some grubbity grew ga booly boo ba I don't actually have it in here, do I? I don't. I don't know why that letter didn't get added to my fucking stuff here. I guess I'm just not going to use it, but I, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was like the name of the place. It was like the Grub and Hub or <laughs> the Door and Dash. You know, something like that. Yes, the second incident inside a week at what I believe to be aptly described as the haunted lodgings. One can only presume this is a most unfortunate coincidence. Meanwhile, you say you were not in your room, Mr. Shamspear. Twas following morn when I did awaken that I learned it of the dire events. Mary, what a commotion did the officers of the law make on the floor above me? When Saseki san was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. As suspected, there is nothing connecting these two witnesses but happenstance. It's true. It does seem as though they are unrelated at first glance. But I'm not so sure. There's something lurking in the shadows here. I feel certain of it. And this is my one and only chance to expo expose it. Counsel, you may now cross-examine these two witnesses if you wish. Yes, my lord! Oh god, you startled me! Okay. Uh, evening of the 17th of February. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm just gonna go ahead and hop over to him. And I want to hear where he was he planning to eat. Uh, I was at the tavern on the eve of which thou speakest, for I had bespoke my supper. Hold it! Mata! A tavern, you say? Which one? Twas the slug and salad where I did tarry. Tis a jewel in the east end. So, what? Ah, uh, I'm trying to understand. So why would he be the one? He was the one that sent her the letter, right? He was the one that she was going to meet? Why? <laughs> I was thinking, is he trying to get her killed too? And a little unexpected, I feel. Hmm? What do you mean, Lord Van Zeeks? The Slug and Salad offers unusually fine dining, for the locality at least. Not an establishment you expect to be patronized by a man with not even a crumb of bread in his room. Uh... I can't look back and forth. Don't forget that's a thing. It's true. The menu lists premium crust of bread and glass of water and different levels of, and different levels of cloudiness. 
I would have expected grub grubberies in a local vicinity to be more appropriate for your means. Watery soup and mushy peas, or rather soupy water and pea-like mush. <laughs> All equally appetizing. I, I just wanted to try some water in a different pub for once. What's wrong with that? How different can water really be? But perhaps there's a more plausible explanation. A specific reason why he had to go to that particular establishment. Agreed. The fact that on that day of all days, he dined at a place he wouldn't normally. It does stand out. So Mr. Shakespeare's own actions on the day of the incident six days ago were slightly suspicious. I wonder if he has some evidence that can explain those actions. Um, uh, I don't think I actually do because I don't have the letter here. I think I, I might have to get that first. I don't, I don't have it yet. Wish we did, but sadly, I can't think of anything at the moment. Okay. I think I have to, I think I have to get that from her. Uh, let's see. Um, I had little matter to attend to, that's Hold all. It. What little matter, Miss Green? Please elaborate. It was nothing really. It's not worth mentioning. If you remember, you mentioned it to us yesterday at the hospital. Ah! Uh, it was related to the card you were holding. Miss Green! Oh! Excuse me, I'm trying to drink some poison, sir. What was that? She clearly just hid something behind her back. From memory, I believe the car continued to note that red. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. What does that matter? This has nothing to do with Duncan. Uh? Excuse me. Excuse me! Ugh! Mr. Shakespeare, do you have something to share with the court? To be or not to be, that is the question. Ah, pray forgive me. The great boss word springeth from within me with ne'er a thought. Don't tell me. It's because you're possessed by Shakespeare's spirit, right? Hearing Miss Green's words a moment ago seemed to make you think of something. Something of relevance, perhaps. <laughs> um, well? Nay, nay, sire. Twas nothing at all. Nothing at all. Presumably, you know the name, though. Mr. Duncan Ross, I mean. After all, you were both lodgers in the same house. I would it were so, but sadly, nay. Lodging be a lonely occupation, sire. My lodging fellows be rarely known to me. So you haven't heard of him, even though he passed away in the room just one floor above yours. Hmm, Miss Green. Me, my lord, have I done something wrong? The car that was mentioned before, containing the note. Do you have it upon your person? Here we go. I do, yes, but I don't need any more. In fact, I should throw it away, really. Before you dispose of it, the court will take it as evidence, please. Finally. I don't know what. Was there, for some reason, we were just like, I'm just not going to take it. I mean, was there, do you really think it wasn't going to be? Well, well, I guess at the time, I guess you could argue at the time, it wasn't seemingly connected to the case. But I mean, to be fair, I have literally in my inventory right now the other half of this fucking green envelope. So I still feel like I could have been like, wait a minute. I feel like I recognize the color of this or something. Uh, a note in an envelope that seems to have been ripped open rather roughly. It contains instructions to meet with someone who claims to have inf information about Duncan Ross. Of course, that's what links Mr. Shamps here, Miss Green. It's Duncan Ross. Now continue with our testimony, please, Miss Green. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I think I have what I need, but real quick, I just want to look at this. The envelope has been ripped open rather carelessly, hasn't it? Miss Green strikes me as the type to open correspondence more neatly than that. Ah. What is it? The way the envelope is torn. I'm almost sure I've seen that exact same shape somewhere else. Oh, you don't mean? Were you thinking of this piece of evidence, Mister Naruto? Exactly. That's it. Try matching them up. Hey. Oh. They go together perfectly. This torn off end of the envelope clearly belongs with this card. Ha ha. The envelope fits perfectly with a torn off piece found at the scene of the crime. Good. All right. I think we're good. So let's go back to the one we had before. Uh, I was at the tavern. 
Oops. Uh, press. All right. Mr. Shamspear. <laughs> yes, sire. On the day in question, it's not the case that you visited the Slung and Salad, a place you don't normally patronize, for a very particular reason. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <gasps> Pray, if thou hast some purpose, speak. Yeah. Very well, I will present the court with evidence. Evidence that explains why you had to be at the Slug and Sal that day, namely, boo. I believe this card reveals the answer. Good Lord, Miss Green's card, you mean? The one I just got five seconds ago? That's right, my Lord. It reads, I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. Mr. Shamspear, your acts on the day of Miss Green's stabbing are exactly as described in this note. Ugh. Personally, I find it hard to believe that's a coincidence. Don't you, Mr. Shamspear? Um, well, excuse me, can I say something? Yes, Miss Green? The card was delivered to me. It doesn't have anything to do with this odd man, does it? Well, well, you'd think so, yes. But it's hard to believe it's merely... My lord, may I? May you what, Miss Green? I'd like to make something very clear about that card. Very well, then. You may amend your testimony. To include details about the peculiar note. This note was delivered to me at my address. It's nothing to do with the odd man next to me here. Uh... You sure about that? Objection! Press it in again! <laughs> the day before the incident, exactly one week ago now, this note was delivered to your address. And upon carrying out the instructions in the note, you found yourself in the hospital. Actually, I think I think it actually gave it to me. I think I probably could have... I, what I could have submitted was, was... Are they still separate? Oh, they are. Yeah. Probably should have done this one, but it was nice enough to at least say, you know, it added the information. The envelope fits perfectly. This fits perfectly. So, so that's nice. I always like when the games at least give you like, you know, if something basically is the same fucking thing. Yes, I did. It's terrible. Everything that's happened to me. Yes, it is terrible. If it's all true, that is. What do you mean? Miss Green, have a look at this, please. It's the torn off end of an envelope. Oh, is it? And it so happens that it fits together perfectly with the envelope of the note you received. What? Where did you find that? You really need to learn to toss your trash, ma'am. In Mr. Shamspear's room. Uh, in my room? Mr. Shamspear, do you perhaps remember this note from somewhere? Uh, well. Your actions that afternoon followed the instructions in the note to the letter. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. And so that's exactly where you went. Let me ask you again, Mr. Shamspear. You already knew about this note, didn't you? Uh, a little help here. And you, Miss Green. Uh, what did I do? As this torn off end of the envelope proves, the note was originally in Mr. Shamspear's room. So how is it that it came to be in your possession? I, I don't have the first idea. I'm just a fledgling artist after all. Oh. So she so she didn't like get the, the, the letter sent her. She went to his room and like found it there? There's only one explanation. You broke into Mr. Shamsir's room and stole it. You did what? Sorry, the horse what? You broke, I, I mean, the now we're in my room. <laughs> he's losing, he's losing his character. What on earth do you want with me? Why wow, he really doesn't know, oh, wow. Interesting. He really doesn't know her. What? It would seem that both witnesses need to testify again. Miss Green. Yes, I'm the middle of a very important piece here. Whilst you have the core sympathy, I'm sure, for the suffering you have endured in recent events, 
anyone found to be giving false testimony in a court of law will be duly punished. Unless it's beneficial to me, occasionally. And then I'm like, well, maybe they just forgot and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that really didn't, I actually looked at, I was, I was happy to see it in the comments. Some of you guys were a little miffed by that too. And I, I felt that seemed like slightly out of character for Vanzies. Cause up to this point, he's actually been pretty good about like calling out bullshit on, you know, bullshit characters. So I thought it was a little weird that they did that, but it might've just been more of like a, well, we gotta get you to, you know, press a little harder. And they, that was the only way to go about it. I don't know. Unless I can, I could be misremembering other times he's done the same thing, but it did seem a little out of character. Generally, Van Zix is just really seemed like a guy that is looking for the truth as well, you know, in his own way, at least. Please bear that in mind. Yes, I know. Very well then, witnesses. You will give formal testimony again now. On the subject of this curious anomaly regarding the note Miss Green claims to have received. All right. The anomaly of the note. I do remember now. It was a week ago. Per adventure, that note was delivered unto me. On the day in which therein, I did tarry a long hour at the slug and salad. Yes, nobody came. Thereafter, on the evening, I shared the company of the Japanese fellow. I did see the note had vanished. I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck into this man's room, do you? Why would I? I can point out the villain here and ask for that torn off piece of the envelope. I don't know anything about it. The villain here, huh? That's an interesting thing to say, Miss Green. That's a very interesting thing to say. Hmm, you now claim to receive this letter, do you, Mr. Shamspear? Faith, tis so, my lord. And I would swear to have set it upon the table in my humble lodgings. Yet, tis clear to me now that since I returned from the tavern that night, I have not laid eyes upon it. Hmm. Well, that being the case, young lady, it would appear that your testimony was... A lie? Is that what you think? How unfair of you to think I am the one lying? I beg your pardon. I'm just a fledgling artist, as I said. A fledgling artist don't lie. That note was delivered to me at my address. Besides, we all know who the liar around here is. If that's true, Miss Green, how do you explain the facts? This part of the envelope was, without question, found in Mr. Shamster's room. I don't see why I should explain. Damn, she's a she's a tough little tough little round cookie. Sorry? I'm a fledgling artist. My job here is just to say what happened, that's all. It's your job to give the explanations and the proofs. You, the fledgling lawyer. The fledgling will do his best. Evidently, my learned friend's cross-examination is our only hope of learning the truth. Well, counsel. I'm ready, my lord. Very well, then. The defense will now proceed with the cross-examination of the witnesses. Miss Green clearly did break into Mr. Shamster's room. There can be no question of that. And that's how she acquired the note. Yes, two facts that are starting to lead me to a possible explanation for all of this. It's not a pretty one. So she maybe went to try to figure out what had happened to her fiance and found that note, like looking through Shamsper's room, I guess. But even then, that how would that reveal anything to her? All that says is to meet somebody at the, the slug and salad. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I do remember, towards a week ago, per venture, that note was delivered unto me. Let me press on that. And can you shed any light on the contents of the note at all? Nay, sire, tis as strange to me as foreign tongue. Even with the knowledge of literature as great as mine, own oh, verily, it tis impenetrable. But Mr. Duncan Ross had lodgings in the same household as you. In effect, he was your neighbor. So surely you knew him, didn't you? Alack, if the choices be twixt, I knew him and I knew him not. Then tis with foreboding that I be forced to declare we were by some small measures acquainted. Despite your claims, though, you follow the note's instructions and went to the slug and salad. Presumably that was nothing to do with your knowledge of literature. Mary, not will have the best better of me, sire, save for the lure of curiosity. So tis true, I was compelled by my own eager heart to betake myself to the tavern. 
Yet in the end, my curiosity was not satiated. On the day writ therein, I did tarry long at the slug and salad, yet nobody came. So even after waiting for an hour, nobody appeared. Well, um, yes, sire. Tis as thou sayest. Really? You paused for a moment before you answered. In truth, when thou asked whether nobody appeared, I did suddenly recall. Really? Do you mean to tell the court that somebody did appear after all? I was not alone that night at the slug and salad, my lord. No, tis returning to me now. I did treat my lips to almost clear water and mine innards to a premium crust of bread. And all around me danced a great many companions. Oh, oh so gaily did we dance together. Oh, oh, just like this. What do you mean? Flies, sire, flies. Good lord. In the name of Beelzebub, what were they? Fairies, perchance, from a midnight summer night's dream, come to talk to me. I think they were just flies. I can't help thinking that the flies would have choose something more wholesome to buzz around. Is that wrong of me? <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, thereafter in the evening, I share the company of the Japanese fellow. I did see the note had vanished. Hold it! When exactly did you notice it had gone missing? Such idle thoughts ne'er occupy my mind. I'm busy with greater ideas. Like poisoning my, like poisoning a Japanese fellow. In other words, you didn't notice. Several days passed between your outing to the tavern and Mr. Natsumi's visit to your room. Yes, it appeared that the note disappeared sometime in that interval. Such idle thoughts may occupy my mind. I am busy with greater ideas. And yet, during that time, you, Miss Green was comatose and in hospital, was she not? Clearly, then, she could not have been stealing things from Mr. Shamspear's room. Yes, yes, of course. It's it's all some sort of misunderstanding, isn't it, Mr. Prosecutor, sir? I don't know, bitch. I don't know you. You have so far failed to give a satisfactory explanation as to how you came by the note. Uh See, this is what I mean. Like this shit right here. This is this is Van Zix. This is the Van Zix. Like, well, I'm not gonna let that shit slide. I'm not here to advocate for your defense, madam. I won't tolerate inconsistencies in your story. You would do well to remember that. Oh, d d d deary me. What's Lord Fancy's getting at? Um, I don't know what you mean. You think I snuck in this man's room. Why would I? It. it seems that this note was actually delivered to Mr. Shamspear about one week ago. Oh, does it? But for some reason, it ended up in your possession. I can't think of any way that could have happened except for your breaking into Mr. Shamspear's lodging. Objection! Objection! But for what reason would the witness have done that? Ah, I, I, um, I won't deny that Miss Green's possession of the note would appear to defy logic. However, until and unless her involvement in this case can be proven in some other way. Any further pursuit of this note is meaningless! Miss Green could only have come to be in possession of the note by s stealing it from Mr. Shakespeare's room. And yet there in there's no obvious reason why she would have done such a thing. What if there was some other reason she broke into his lodgings, though? Yes, we should pursue that idea, Mr. Arahoto. We're close now. I can feel it. We're so close to a breakthrough. Oh, may I just go ahead and present it then? Uh, why would I? I guess, I guess just straight away. Uh, is that the only thing that relates to him here? Objection. Shit! Wrong! Ah, shit. All right, well, let me go ahead and press the last one, then. I can point the villain here and ask for that torn off piece of envelope. I don't know anything about it. So you don't want to tell the court the truth about the letter. Is that it? I'm a fledgling artist, remember? Artists are nearly always introverted characters. Introverted fie. This little fledgling doth readily cast aspersions about my nature. Yet I am an angel, a seraph. Birds do harmonize with my song. The wind doth roll on my wings. Oh, pity. Wherefore dost thou accuse one so pure of heart, ample woman? Ample woman. Pure of heart? I don't think so. If a fledgling like me can see you're just a failure. Tragedy. Thou shalt not know the true heart of an artist. 
until thine instruction hereafter by death. Oh, the days, oh, the years, oh, the wiggly, 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 woo, wiggly, 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 woo. Alas, to enlighten thee, thou must wait so long in, in vain. Star Hodo, interject with some clever remark. This is your chance to shine. I, no Shakespeare actor, Miss Suzuto. No, you do it. No, as far as I can tell, the only thing that's going to resolve this argument is evidence. Yes. So yeah, I didn't actually glean anything. So I just just present. So it's not the it's not the picture, huh? Objection. Ah, the strike on itself. There we go. <laughs> it's like I like I know the the answer, but at the same time, it's like what specifically? Okay, the the literal bottle of poison. I was like. Is it the is it the boyfriend that she's trying to avenge? No. Is it the in, the incident where it happened? Where like, oh yeah, you wanted to put the poison on the pipe? No, no, it's the literal bottle. Okay, got it. All right. Yesterday at the hospital, we saw you with this bottle, and though the contents spilled during the course of our meeting, a small quantity remained. Uh. According to the defense's independent analysis, Mr. Holmes's chemistry said <laughs> the liquid that was still in the bottle was identified as strike nine. What? Strike nine. The very same poison that afflicted Mr. Shamspear. Ah. Miss Green, you broke into this man's lodgings for one reason and one reason alone. To cover the end of the pipe that feeds the gas lamp in Mr. Shamspear's room with poison. C can this be? You broke into my room? To... It may seem incredible to the court, but from the remaining clues, there's only one logical conclusion that we can reach. The person who attempted to take Mr. Shamspear's life with poison was you, Miss Olive Green. Oh dear, oh dear, oh, oh dearie, me! Ah, oh, shit, she's dead. Oh, order, order! Counsel, are you seriously suggesting this woman put poison on the end of the gas pipe with intent to kill? Yes, my lord. There's no other way to explain the facts. But if Miss Green did indeed set this odious trap six days ago, and the victim had put his mouth to the pipe that very evening as is expected, the attempted murder would have happened six days ago, surely. Ah, um, well, that's a very good point. Perhaps not, my lord. I beg your pardon? There was a significant police presence in the area that evening on account of the incident on Briar Road. Local residents were being interviewed throughout the night as part of the ongoing inquiry. A circumspect criminal would likely have chosen not to carry out any wrongdoing at the time. Lord Van Zeeks. And of course, the following morning, there was more activity at Mr. Shamspear's address. More activity. Ah, yes. You mean his fellow lodger, Mr. Asume, being arrested on suspicion of murder. That's right. And as the defense has already proposed, Mr. Shamspear was meddling with the gas in the pipe for a very sinister reason himself. To cause the gas to have Mr. Asume's room to go out, thereby asphyxiating the, co the occupant. But once Mr. Asume had been arrested, his room was under constant surveillance by the police. In the circumstances, Mr. Shamspear had no reason to blow air into the gas pipe. His intended victim being in a prison cell. With the need to tamper with the gas removed, the poison on the pipe lay dormant. And then, three days ago, the situation changed again. Right! Mr. Asumi's trial, which took place here at the Old Bailey, came to an end. The trial in which the man stood accused of stabbing a screen in the back, but was duly acquitted. That results in Mr. Natsumi's return to his lodgings for the first time in two days. And that very night, his gas stove mysteriously went out, and Mr. Shamspear was mysteriously poisoned. Uh, um. In conclusion, the poison that was present on the mouth of the gas pipe had been put there in the victim's room some four days earlier. Oh, Mary! Mary Magdalene! Oh! With that new understanding, it becomes clear that this letter was all part of the plan. What plan? The court will recall that the note gave instructions to visit the slug and salad at five o'clock, and that the recipient should tell nobody else, 
The reason for those instructions are now clear. To ensure the lodger would not be at home at this state of time. Oh, so she sent the note to him. She sent him the note to get him to leave so that she would go in there. So, okay. Okay, this is like... Now we're starting to piece together. So, yeah. Knowing this information, she was the one that, that broke into his, his room. Why did she take the note to hide the evidence? I guess she left the other half of the envelope there, though. But then the question becomes, how did she realize that Shamspear was the one that killed him? Because that seems like a really tall stretch for somebody to piece together, right? To make sure I wasn't home? Exactly. I like how... I like how he's he's just as confused as we are about this whole thing. Like he, I love that he has no idea who this fucking lady is. He's like, what the hell? What did I do to you? While you were out, Miss Green could safely slip into your room, knowing that she wouldn't be disturbed. You, you mean to say that letter was written by Miss Green? Yes. And in order to recover her tracks, she took it away with her when she left. Hmm. Just after she smeared poison over the mouth of the gas pipe in your room. <laughs> it's not like she's staying on a little box. Lord, Lord, what do you have to say for yourself, witness? Just who are you? Why did you try to kill me? <laughs> Miss Green's motives should be obvious. It's all tied up was someone whose name we've heard several times already during the course of this trial. So, that's what's behind all this. You will share your apparent understanding with the court, please, counsel. Which person is behind this woman's motive for the, vic for the attack on the victim's life? Now, behold! Take that! Duncan Ross. That's right. Before the defendant, Mr. Asume, took up residence in lodging at, lodgings at Mr. Garadab's, somebody else was renting the room. Mr. Duncan Ross. I knew I'd heard the name somewhere else. It was all over the papers a month ago, when the man died in strange circumstances at the haunted lodgings. Hmm, that does ring a vague. Ah, of course, yes, I remember now. The young man they claimed was strangled by the con convict's curse or some such. Sadly, my lord, it wasn't a curse of any kind, nor was it an accident. The man died as a result of Mr. Shamspear blowing the gas pipe and causing gas to leak into the room. It was murder, plain and simple. Ah! <laughs> well, what do you know? The world is so unfair. Curses, curious deaths, that's all people care about. If it's an interesting story, they want to know. It doesn't cross their minds that real people are involved. And once they're bored, just one month later, once the story's lost his appeal, everyone's forgotten him. You, you mean you? Duck it was you! Mr. Ross was Miss Green's fiance. F fiance? You may not have known until now who Miss Green really is, Mr. Shamspear. But she's known exactly who you are all along. Because you're her sworn enemy. The murderer took the life of the man she was to marry. Marry? Miss Green, is it not the case? That in order to exact revenge on Mr. Shamspear, you smear poison over the end of the gas pipe. This is all quite extraordinary. Am I correct in my understanding that you now accuse both parties, counsel? Each on different counts of murder? Oh, yeah. Yes, my lord. That's correct. Objection! Objection! Inhaling so deeply, it appears that my fledgling learned friend has taken in a lungful of dubious gas as causing his judgment to be clouded. What? Why would Mr. Shamspear have wanted to kill these lodges, as you say? You have completely failed to provide a motive to substantiate your accusation against the man! Yes! Yes! That's right, Mr. Reaper, my liege! I... I have been slighted! Tis lies! All lies! I deny every utterance! <laughs> oh. And you'll have to forgive me, Mr. Narodo, sir! 
but I don't intend to admit to anything either. Miss Green. I'm sure you'll think I'm being very rude, but... I'm not going to be sent to the gallows for the likes of this scoundrel. Objection! Objection! But you broke into the man's room. If you didn't do it to smear the poison on the pipe, what was your reason? I thought I'd have a look around. That's all. Sorry? You're right. I suspected him. So I thought perhaps I might find some evidence or something in his room. Evidence that it was him who took Duncan's life. Oh, vileness! Oh, villainy! Oh, tyranny! Oh, rotundity of woman! <laughs> but in any case, whenever I, whenever I leave my room, I do turn the key in the lock! That whole place is falling apart. The locks and the doors are no different. Duncan showed me how to unlock the door with some tropes and a piece of fire. <laughs> oh, awfulness! Oh, awfulness! Oh, tyranny! Oh, profanity of woman! We will consider your trespassing on some future occasion, but for now, tell the court what you found, what evidence your search revealed. Well, I spotted the note that I sent him lying on the floor. When I went to pick it up, I noticed something. One of the floorboards was loose, and underneath it, I discovered a secret hiding place. Huh? <laughs> yes, we also discovered that hiding place. Inside, we found a newspaper cutting, a photograph, and an empty tin box. That box wasn't empty, though, probably, right? Till she got a hold of whatever was in there. Ah, oh, yes. Well, the thing is, when I found it, the box wasn't empty. What? There was something in it? Yes. Oh, that key. Oh, the key that she's been twirling around with this whole time, of course, right? The key had to come into play at some point. This rather nice key. <laughs> what are you doing with that? What the? Every ounce of color has strained from his face. Give it here. Get to me now. It's mine. I inherited it. What was that witness? What did you say? You inherited it. Uh, um, no, I... Uh. What's all this about? He inherited that key? It was obviously important to you, since you've gone to such lengths to hide it. So I took it. I don't know what it's for, but you took something precious from me, so I took something precious from you. So what if it means you can't open something now? I don't care. <laughs> Give it back this minute! Give it to me! Calm yourself, witness! So Mr. Shamspear has tried, and in one case succeeded, to take the life of two lodgers now. Yes, his motive for doing so is the key to everything that's happened. Hmm. It's true that there appears to be no motive to support the accusation against Mr. Shamspear at first. But considering everything we now know, I think there's actually something that could explain it. What? Woo! Let me smack my cheeks first. I need to recall every piece of evidence at our disposal, everything we've seen and heard because I'm sure that I just caught a glimpse of the leak that runs through all of these events. In that case, counsel, I must demand that you present evidence to the court in support of your claim. What is it that you say can explain the motivation of Mr. Shazbury's alleged crimes? Behold. Take that! That's an official police report, is it not? The Selden file. How did you get a hold of that? D Selden? The now sadly deceased Mr. Ross and the defendant, Mr. Natsume, have only one thing linking them. The fact that they had lodgings in the same room. Well, yes, we know this, certainly. A room that was formerly occupied by Selden. Until, that is, he was arrested by Scotland Yard for his involvement in multiple burglaries. Mm, I see. And it so happens that the convict, Selden, left behind one very substantial mystery when he died in one piece. The sum 1,000 pounds worth of loot that he stole, which as of yet remains to be found. Ah, uh, yes, of course. It's coming back to me now. It's written in his file here. A thousand pounds lost en route to hell. That was how the paper summed it up. And it seems that one particular fellow inmate was with the convict in his final moments. 
It's not hard to imagine Selden entrusting that inmate with his most closely guarded secret. The location of the stolen loot, and perhaps a key, to unlock whatever container the valuables were in. Uh, you, you mean this key is... Mr. Shakespeare, it was you, wasn't it? You were at the Capitol Offender's side when he died, were you not? What, what are you talking about? This is a false charge, I tell you! A false charge! The name of the inmate who was with Selden at his death is noted in this file. But a simple telegram to the prison where he died would quickly tell us how false the charge really is. Uh, but, but even if it's true, why would the man be so intent to kill ev killing every subsequent occupant of the convict's lodgings? There's only one explanation for that, my lord. It was in that very room that Selden hid his loot. Yeah. Has he just not been able to find it or something? So, it all comes out. Yes, and having established that, all of Mr. Shakespeare's subsequent actions start to make perfect sense. When he was let out of prison following Selden's death, he made immediately for Mr. Gerdev's lodgings in the hope of renting Selden's old room. However, however, the retired army man was unable to offer him the accommodation of his choice. Because Selden's old room had already been let to somebody else, Mr. Duncan Ross. Ah! Uh -huh. Which is why Mr. Shamspear subsequently devised his gas-based plot to kill the occupant of the room. And when he was successful, he presumably intended to inquire about switching into the newly vacant room. However, a certain jittery subwoman had beaten him to it. Wow, seriously? So, just a second just got there that fast. Because that was the other thing. I was like, really? Couldn't he have, like, just broken in there? Like, why did he have to really kill the guy? Couldn't he just, like, bust it in there and just scavenge his room? Like, why did they have to, like, I gotta kill the guy in the room. And then I can get the room myself and I guess take all the fucking time I need? I don't know. It just seems like a lot of work. We're clearly, as Miss Green pointed out, it's pretty easy to break into these rooms. Mr. Saseki Natsume, the defender of this case, no less. So you decided to use the ploy with the gas again, didn't you, Mr. Shamspear? This time, to oust Mr. Natsume. All for one simple and avaricious reason. To get your hands on the thousand pounds of loot left behind by the dead convict. Oh, you... Uh, ah! Uh-oh. Looks like... I'm gonna snuff it before they get to stretch me neck. Stretch me neck, what? Listen, I will, oh, I want you to have me loot anything to stop the coppers getting their mitts on it. This is, this is Selden. It's hidden in the room where I was lodging when they got me. Yeah, this is the key to it. Take it. Always stay one step ahead, mate. See ya now. I guess <laughs> I'll see you in the eternal flames, Shamspear. In one piece. The silver one piece. Smine. What did he just say? It's mine. That loot is mine. <sighs> Uh-oh. Mr. Shamspear? It's all lies. I don't accept any of it. Why should I? After all, you don't have a shred of evidence. You can't prove I killed that fellow. Forsooth, I'm the victim here, remember? Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? If I don't admit to it, there's nothing you can do. You can't arrest me for the time being anyway. Verily, you can't arrest the victim, can you? Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? I'm so close. I just need a few more hours. I swore to myself that I'd get my hands on it. And I can almost taste it now. Do you really think I'd just give up? There's no question in my mind now. This man is guilty through and through. He seems so utterly intoxicated by the idea of that loot. I'm afraid that however hard you press him, he'll never admit to what he's done, Mr. Arohoto. There is a way. Pardon? There's one way I can finish him. No, 
Yes! <laughs> He's already committed the most heinous crimes to get his hands on that loot. Which means all we need to do is find it first. A fine plan. Words and off with the fact that the police thoroughly searched the room following the death of Mr. Ross. If it's there at all, it must be very well hidden indeed. Hmm. Without conclusive evidence, I certainly cannot rule. If only... If only there was some way we could find the convicts look quickly. Hmm. This is the final piece of the complex puzzle. But I think we might have it in our possession already. Or rather, I think we may well have something that can help us find where that loot is hidden. Hello, hi! Pick, pick me, pick me! My lord! Yes, counsel? The defense would like to make a proposal about how to find the late convict's hidden loot. I believe we are already in possession of something that could give us a clue as to, to its whereabouts. Oh, shigga shigga wiggity 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 woo! It's our last chance, so it has to be worth a gamble. Besides, we've used the same technique once already, and it definitely paid off then. Very well then, counsel. Let the court hear your idea. What do you propose we can use in order to locate the hiding place of the deceased convict's hall? Uh... Oh, the... This. We need to use Holmes's technique. Take that! Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, those are Mr. Shamsbury's handprints on the wall of his lodging. That's right, my lord. Expose the result of the defense's independent investigation of the scene. Based on wonderful new, a wonderful new discovery in the field of forensic science by the great detective, Mr. Holmes. A great detective? Is that some kind of joke? <gasps> Do you really think I'm going to be daunted by a man with this ridiculous title? Uh... I should think the great bard ought to recognize such a title when he hears one, Mr. Shamspear. Hello there! Perhaps we should compete for the honor of most ridiculous title. But, ah! This Sherlock Holmes himself! What are you doing here, great detective? Your usual haunts are the filthy back streets of the capital, are they not? Ah, Mr. Reaper, it's been too long. And I see your complexion has worsened since we last met. The, Mr. Holmes! does know Lord Van Zeex, then. Well, enough to say something like that in any case. Mr. Holmes, though you may be heralded as a great detective by the population at large, that does not give you the right to come and go in my courtroom as you see fit. If I may, my lord. Mr. Holmes' new newly developed scientific method has helped us to uncover vital clues in this case already. Clues, you say? I call them skin prints, my lord. My method identifies every location touched by an individual under scrutiny. It's the method by which we were able to ascertain this gentleman's gas pipe activities. Ah! Oh, you need only a small sample of something the individual has previously touched to make an, an indicator solution. In your case, sir, I used the teacup you had been holding. Elementary. So now, Mr. Narahodo. Uh, yes. What am I to use as a sample to make the indicator solution this time? Thank you for offering to help, Mr. Holmes. When the convict was arrested, he was living in what is now Seki-san's room. We need a sample to help locate Selden's loot that is hidden in his old room. What form What form will the sample take? Uh, present evidence, present a person. I think it's gonna be a person. I think we wanna present uh, Miss Green because we wanna present the key around her neck. We will need something of Selden's in order to create the indicator solution to find his loot. And something the convict owned happens to be in the possession of somebody listed, somebody listed in the court record. Upon my word, Mr. Arahodo, your powers of reasoning appear to be on the on the up. So, which particular person do you have in mind? From whom can we obtain a possession of the late convict Selden to create the indicator solution? Take that! Take that! Miss Green! Uh, me? What do you want with me? The key around your neck, if you please. Sorry. <laughs> that key belonged to Selden. There will be remnants of secretions from the man's skin on a surface that we can use. Probably mixed quite a bit with yours and Mr. Shamspear's, but you know. Very true. That is a sample we need. Using it, we can create the indicator solution required for Mr. Holmes's skin print seeker. And find out exactly what Selden touched in the room that he used to rent. Ah! 
Mr. Shamspear as one great to another, I assure you. If the late convict's hall is hidden somewhere in his formal lodgings, I shall uncover it in no more than 30 minutes. Ah! So, Mr. Shamspear, the truth is well within our grasp now, and as such, you will never get your hands on Selden's stolen wealth. Ah! 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 In that case, I'll gladly let Mr. Holmes have this key. No! Give the key to me! The detainer should have it! It's over, Mr. Shamspear. No! No! You're out of options now. There's only one thing left for you to do. Admit your guilt! Whoa. <gasps> oh, shit! Despair! Despair! Be my name! Oh, wow. I had confetti in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dead. See you in the eternal flame, Shamespear. I never intended to kill the man. I just... I just wanted to drive him out of the room. That's all. So you'd have time to find the convict's hall of stolen goods? Did you just say it was in his room and not particularly, specifically where, I guess? Yet after you'd killed the young man, you still didn't move into the room. I asked the landlord, of course. I pleaded with him, but he refused. Why? I was three months behind with the rent. For one thing, Oh. Mr. Garadap really has had a lot to put up with. <laughs> and he had the gas repair work done re immediately afterwards, putting the room out of action for a while. And then this Japanese man swooped in at just the right moment to sign the new lease. Poor Mr. Natsume. What unfortunate timing. Then, five days ago, after the incident on Briar Road, when the Japanese fellow got himself arrested. I thought I'd finally have my chance, but it wasn't to be. No, the scene was sealed off and guarded by the police night and day. And if I remember rightly, Mr. Holmes spent the whole day in there reading books. <coughs> I couldn't even enter the room, let alone search for the loot. Which is why, on the day Mr. Nasumi was acquitted and returned to his room, you once again tried your trick of blowing air into the gas pipe that feeds the stove in his room. Unbeknownst to you, however, that action would lead you into a deadly trap. William Shamspear, how does it go? To be or not to be? That is the question. From Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1. Well, let me tell you, in your case, it's not to be. That is the answer. You deserve to die for what you've done. Oh, damn! Because you're a psychotic, disgusting piece of filth, and you deserve to die. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it means I'm probably going to jail, too. At first, I really did think it was just a terrible accident. I'll never forget our conversation the night before Duncan died. Uh... The gas supply on my new lord is a complete disaster, you know, Olive. The gas supply? Yes, the snow always seems to go out in the middle of the night for some reason. That's no joke. They say it's the convict's curse. Oh, Duncan, please, don't stay there. I don't care how cheap it is. All right, then. If it's that important to you, I'll start looking for a new place. There are spare rooms in my house. Why don't you leave that whole room tonight? No, I better not. We said we'd wait until we get graduated before we told our parents, remember? But that was the last time we ever spoke. That very night, he fell victim to the gas. If only I'd known it was going to happen. I'd have insisted he left that horrible room that instant. But instead, all I've been left with is bitter regret. I stopped going to school, but something kept drawing me back to the house on Briar Road. I saw a stooped eastern-looking man with a mustache coming out of the house one day when I was there. He walked up the road to Grub's Scrubbery for some food, 
so I followed him and sat there myself and sat myself down next to him. He had some watery looking soup and started to pick up quarrel with the, pub the, the publican. That place is cursed, I tell you. Cursed! The ghost of that comic he used to live there. It's trying to suffocate me! I, I wake up in the middle of the night, freezing to death because the stove has gone out. The room is full of gas and I hardly breathe. But the pipes have been checked. No problem there. It's like, I'm the problem! That's what they're thinking! But how could that be? Duncan was gone and... Now this man had almost suffered the same fate. Could it really be a curse? I see. Wow, she she really did piece it together herself. Damn, she's a smart, chunky, chunky lass. Then I remembered. A rumor I'd heard about how the gas companies go around investigating the gas installations. A rumor? Ah, uh, you mean? Yes, everybody's heard the stories, it seems, about how they go around checking the pipes. How anything connected to the gas can be extinguished by blowing air into the pipework. Ah, uh, that's also the reason why they brought that up earlier, right? Like, yeah, sure, it's not a secret. Everybody knows about it. I see. That's when it started. A little flicker of doubt in the back of my mind that just wouldn't go away. Was it really an accident, though? Once I'd had the idea, it wouldn't leave me alone. It plagued me day and night. So I bought this at one of the black markets in the East End. A black market? I'd never been. I just heard people talk about them. And you really can buy anything you can think of there. Including guns! In some ways, being able to get my hands on this so easily made me even more determined. I had to find out one way or another. Was Duncan's death an accident? Or was it murder? And your chosen method for establishing the truth was simple, but highly effective. Smear poison on the gas pipe you suspected the man of tampering with, and wait. Ah. Uh, well, the thing is, though, the problem with that, though, is they have people from the Altamont Gas Company, right, that regularly come in and check this stuff? So couldn't she have easily, just as, just as easily also killed the, the, the Altamont Gas guy, <laughs> right? If Mr. Shamsher was innocent, nothing would come of what you'd done. But if he was guilty, Actually, well, if he was innocent, somebody else might get into trouble because, I mean, like, again, other people do do that for their occupation. But if he was guilty, he would pay for his crimes dearly. I found out the name of the man I was suspected, William Shakespeare, and then I wrote him this little note. I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the Slug and Salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on the 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. If he'd done it, I knew that would worry him enough so he'd be sure to go. So I wait to see if it worked. And of course, Mr. Shamspear followed the instructions to the letter. I worked out where the gas pipe was straight away. So I smeared a good amount of the poison I bought all round the mouth of the pipe. All the time praying that the devil's work wouldn't be done and that it was all just some wild fantasy. Actually, no. All the time praying that the devil's work would be done and that the culprit would get his just desserts. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Susato sad. May he burn in the deepest bowels of hell. Well, damn. Three days ago, when you were first stood in the dark before me, this whole affair seemed rather, seemed relatively straightforward. Oh, yes, my lord. I certainly never imagined the depths of depravity that we should subsequently find lurking behind the scenes. It has been a long road, my Nipponese friend. Hopefully you aren't back here again tomorrow! Oh, yes! In one I certainly didn't envisage walking with you. Nevertheless, together we have reached the light at the end of the tunnel, as it were. Miss Green. Yes, my lord. You will henceforth be stripped of your freedom. 
as punishment for the attempted murder of Mr. William Shamspear, even though he fucking deserved it. Yes, I know. Originally the victim of the last case and now the culprit of this case. How about that, man? And you, Mr. Shamspear, you will be tried for the murder of Mr. Duncan Ross in cold blood and the subsequent attempted murder of Mr. Saseki Nasume here present. <sighs> Uh, Mr. Norohodo. Uh, yes. Yesterday, at the hospital, when you and your friends stopped me from... From ending your life by drinking what was left in the poison bottle. I... I wasn't myself. I can't even really remember what was going through my mind. To be, or not to be, I suppose. It's a question that's so hard to answer, it seems. Well, personally, I'm glad of you being here, Miss Green. Oh? And I'd like to believe that it's a blessing Mr. Shamspear didn't die when he ingested the poison. For your sake, at the very least. Oh. Because of you, I chose life, not death. And now, you've made the truth come out at last. Really, I can't thank you enough. Oh, Miss Green. All right, everyone's going to jail now. <laughs> Mr. Seseki Natsume. Yes, my lord. The court declares that you are exonerated from all blame in this matter yet again. Accordingly, I would call upon the ladies and gentlemen of the jury to present a verdict of not guilty. We are in full agreement, my lord. In that case, I hereby declare the defendant... Not guilty! Let the... Oh! Confetti! It is confetti. Good. Yeah. And oh, fireworks! Holy shit! Oh my god, my beer is so fire! I gotta remember if it was like... Wait, was it confetti? It's cherry blossoms of Japan. But confetti in England and also Japanifornia. <laughs> Court is adjourned. Everybody, fuck the fuck off. There you go. Now you're starting to get it. Yeah. yeah. I'm starting to like you more. Uh, February 23rd, 324 p.m., the Old Bailey defending Sandy Chamber. Oh, yes, yes, at last. Divine justice duly done. Divine justice? My dear fellow, if there were any divine justice in this world, you would shave that mustache. <laughs> no, this... Has nothing to do with my mustache! Some say that a luxurious mustache. It's a sign of physical prowess, Mr. Holmes. Look, I'm sure Mr. Ahon Esquire! Once again, once again, you saved me from doom! I'm very happy to have been able to help, Mr. Natsume. Congratulations on your acquittal. Again, your second in almost as many days! I need to get the fuck out of this country. I was first acquainted with and gained affection for English literature whilst in our great homeland empire. And then by a twist of fate, I was brought to the land that bore the fruit of that literature. Only, the city of bricks and mortar became my prison. Try as I might, I never found my feet here. In the end, I confined myself to my room and lived life through friendly old books. You've had such a difficult time, haven't you? Ah, uh, but a week ago now, I dragged you out of that dark and dingy room of yours, did I not? You did, you did. And I've seen more of life in this week than in all my years to date. And for the first time, I feel I've begun to see the true face of the English that's so far been hiding from, behi from me behind the wall of fog. My dear fellow, there is nothing special about the true face of the English as you put it. Wheresoever one goes in the world, humans are human. There are few genuine differences. Yes, I think you're right. I finally started to see that, and I've come to understand something. You fucking suck <laughs> I worked out as to why I was attracted to English literature in the first place. It made me see that what, whatever our nationality, we humans all have the same hopes and fears. We're all just doing our best to live. Well said. I've come to feel the same way. I've made decision two. I'm going to cut short my study tour here. 
and return to Japan. Yeah, that that is what he wanted to tell us. What? I guess he had. I guess that was the thing he had told us uh, last time. Just, just when we become friends here in England, what a terrible shame. Oh, I know. That just took at my heartstrings. It really does. But the longer I remain here, the higher my chance of being fucking arrested again. But I've decided I'd like to take everything I've learned here in Britain and write something of my own. Something about cats. That sounds nice. A devil of sorts, I suppose. Oh my, so you'll be creating your own literature, Mr. Natsume. How wonderful. Oh, well, no. I, I mean, I want a person to call a literature. Why not? When that is precisely the definition, Mr. Mustache. You're not coming with me, are you? <laughs> I suppose you're right, yes. It will, in a way, be literature. But as of now, all I know is that I'd like to try my hand at writing. I have no delusive grandeur. Not yet, at least. I, for one, would love to read your work. Well, all things considered, it may be for the best. After all, you have once again emerged victorious. From a battle with the Reaper. Ah, that's very true. There is no salvation for a person in the dock when the Reaper is the prosecutor. The desire to return post haste to the perceived safety of your homeland is one I quite understand. My goodness, yes. Face was such a terrifying prospect. Nobody would consider that cowardly, I'm quite sure. <laughs> Why are you all looking at me like that? But, but that's... That's not why I'm leaving! I mean it! Objection! Who said objection? To hit him? And that was the case that we found ourselves embroiled in six months ago now. Saseki-san did indeed return to Japan and submit submitted a report about both cases to the government. It was on reading that report that Professor Mikatoba was prompted to visit the scholar. And barely any time later, susito san was given the news that she must return to Japan as well. Hmm. Weird. So we still don't really have an answer as to what is it about this specific case. I, it really didn't come down to shamps or some dirty dang spy or government secrets seemingly at all. Unless maybe that's what the treasure was. Maybe that's, maybe that's what the treasure is? Maybe? Maybe the dirty dank secrets are in the, the treasure? Maybe that's the connection? But right off the bat, we're not seeing anything, right? There is not any, like, seemingly, seemingly any undercover shit going on here. On the back of a telegram stating falsely that her father had fallen gravely ill. The only possible explanation that comes to mind is what happened after the trial on the following day. The day that we uncovered the loot hidden by the now deceased convict in his former lodgings Oh, oh shit. Might be right about that, though. Oh. Ah, kitty. February 24th, 10.13 a.m., Mr. Asume's room. This place is still a fucking dump. Oh, well done, Mr. Holmes. How simply marvelous of you to cover the secret hiding place in just one day. Was this supposed to take 30 minutes? <laughs> this thing was really hidden. <laughs> As I believe I told you, my dear fellow, skin prints are extremely useful in such situations. Wouldn't you agree, Gregson? Oh. Ah. Bexy's been happily munching in agreement this whole time, you know, Holmesy. Happily? I think perhaps humorlessly might be closer to the truth. So, it transpires that man fashioned a hiding place in the ceiling. And what's in it? What's exactly, what exactly is the loot? Let us look then, if you're ready. Let's examine the late burglar's hall. What the? What is that? It looks to be some sort of neckband or collar. What the fuck? What the hell is that? Is it got like a B on it? There's blood on it. A collar? It's huge though. Is it like evidence for a case or something that he's been holding on to? And look at all the gemstones set in it. I can see why it was claimed to be worth a thousand pounds. Perhaps I could have it as a belt. Oh, have you noticed on the inside there? There's some dark stains. You, you don't think they could be blood, do you? I mean, there's quite a lot of it. On second thought, perhaps I won't have it as a belt. <laughs> then of course there's this emblem here. A large letter B and a small crown. Huh. What does this signify, do you think? Oh, I had no 
notice that. Hmm. I feel as though I've seen that emblem somewhere before, you know? Where could it have been? I feel like I have too, actually. Or am I just imagining it? That's enough of that, I think. What? What's the matter, Mr. Holmes? All the color has drained from his face. Well, Inspector, I believe you ought to be taking this, aren't you? It could be valuable evidence after all. It must be kept safely under lock and key. Ah, yes. Get your grubby hands off that, you lot! And head over, now! Does Gregson recognize what it might be? I'd never seen a collar that large before. And all those jewels certainly look to be extremely valuable. But that's not what stood out the most to me. At least, not once I'd noticed it. Those dark marks on the inside of the collar. Those stains. Could they really have been blood? Well, that was a funny case, wasn't it? But it's all buttoned up now. And you look very pleased, Iris. I am, because I was starting to wonder what I could use as the basis of this month's story in the magazine. But this case will be perfect. It's been so fascinating. You're talking about the latest installment of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, I presume. The mystery of the knife in the mist, and the mustache, the mustache man and the convict's curse, perhaps. I could make it a two-part story with my gun. Ah, uh, but Holmes is gonna be like, nope. Oh, I can't wait. Um, a word, please, Iris. Yes, what is it, Holmesy? I'm sorry, but you can't write about this case. It's out of the question. What? Why not? It's a great case. Then I shall have to insist that you limit yourself to the first of your two titles. The second must never be written. Is that clear? Ah, j just the other Suseki case, but not this, not the one we uh, just went through. Yes. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, she knows when he's being stern. And so it was that the second of Sol Seki-san's cases became buried in obscurity. Obscurity. Now, looking back, I feel I understand. I can see why Mr. Sholmes forbade Iris from publishing the story. It would take a little longer before I saw the link between everything that had happened and would happen. For it wasn't until two months after the arrival of Susato-san's letter that events began to unfurl again, with an incident that took place at the very heart of the eagerly awaited Great Exhibition of London. Ooh. And, or is it just the beginning? Wow, cool, the key of knowledge. Wow, what an awesome case that was. Holy crap, man. What a great case that was. Really threw me for a loop. I got damn, I felt like a I felt like a knucklehead the whole time. I was just like, I just could not piece that shit together. I think I just, I think I took too much of what Miss Green said at face value when I should have been more suspicious, I guess, of her trying to hide stuff. I don't know. I guess she seems so like I guess genuine with us. Like she even said before when we talked to her, I was like, that's everything that I know, you know. I, I guess I just took that too much instead didn't really think to question her as to like was she really lying and in what way was she lying or at least not at least not well enough to fully understand what was going on but what a great case though just overall like really well paced and interesting and how it tied in with the last game's uh, uh case as well as Saseki and basically gave the characters that we you know didn't get a chance to talk with much like Shamspear all for all of like two seconds uh, I think we even ran to Big Chin guy who we didn't wasn't involved in uh, uh, in the last case that much either. Like he was just there. We just talked to him for like half a second. And then similarly, Miss Green, who we never even got to see or talk to, and then she ends up being the culprit for this case. It's like, damn man, awesome, really, really, really good. And Shamspear made it for a great victim slash culprit as well. Damn man, this game is off to a fucking phenomenal star these first two cases have been fantastic so good i cannot wait to see where we go from here um but anyway guys 
I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did. If you did, please do a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe if you're not ready to become Piggy Penguin. Aboard the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.